In January 2024, OpenAI launched their GPT store, a place where normal people could create custom GPTs, chat GPT powered apps, publish them, and then make money the more people use them. Millions of people flocked to the GPT store as a way to get their tools and their AI expertise in front of a huge audience. They were hoping to make a lot of money. However, a few weeks into its launch, we see a few problems. Today I want to talk about four major problems of the GPT store. And hey, my name is Mike. I work at the AI startup Pickaxe, which is no code builder for GPTs. And we've been talking to tons of people publishing GPTs in the GPT store, some very successfully, some not very successfully. Um, we've taken all of our conversations with them and synthesized them into this little report for you. So here are the four problems of the GPT store. Number one, the user base is limited for your GPT. Now, while tons of people use ChatGPT, only ChatGPT Plus subscribers can use your custom GPT on the GPT store. These are the people who opt in to pay $20 a month to OpenAI. Now, that's still a lot of people. Those are millions of people. However, it's problematic because most people making AI tools are making them for people who don't know much about AI, who aren't super experienced. And the ChatGPT Plus people are the exact opposite. They're the people who know a lot about AI. So the exact people that you want to, you know, sort of sell your expertise to, your AI tools, well, those people can't use it. The second problem is that the monetization is unclear. Frankly, you can't monetize your GPT directly. The whole GPT store works in a rather unclear way, kind of on this Spotify revenue sharing model, where you know the more people that listen to a song on Spotify, the more money the artists get. Now, if you're Taylor Swift, this ends up to be a lot of money, but for most artists who get like you know, 10,000, 100,000 listens, they don't really get much money. And OpenAI seems to be working on a similar model. Uh, you, it's really unclear how you make money, where I think a lot of people would prefer to just charge a certain set amount to either buy access to it outright for forever or maybe like a monthly subscription. But this model, it's, it's very unclear how much money you can make or how much money people are making. The third problem is, well, you can't use your GPT where you need it. What do I mean by this? Well, most people want to use these tools where they're already doing their work. They want to embed it into their website or into their workplace or into their you know, Google Drive, into their Notion, these sorts of things. Now, the problem with the GPTs is you have to use them in OpenAI's environment. So you have to send people, either your customers or your coworkers that you're sharing with them with, you have to send them out of your ecosystem into OpenAI's. The final problem is you have no relationship with your users. Can you imagine opening a store and selling products to people and having no idea who's buying your products? It's pretty crazy, but that's exactly how the GPT store works. There's no sense of whether uh, to see who is using it, how they're using it, what sort of results they are. There's a feedback mechanism built in, but for the most part, you just don't know who your customers are. Now, these are the four major problems of the GPT store, and there's a lot of smaller stuff we didn't cover, but these are the things we've heard over and over from all the people that we've interviewed. And here at Pickaxe, a no-code GPT builder, uh, we're talking to a lot of people with these problems and trying to fix it for them. So if you want a solution for monetizing your GPTs in a direct way with a relationship with your users, where, they, where you can embed it wherever your business is and totally white label it, well, you should check out our website. And for more videos about the no-code AI space, give us a follow. Thanks.